taking pictures of other people's vehicles and license plates, which is against the law. Taking photography. Okay. Not here. Not right now, okay? Okay. What are you going to do if I don't stop? What is your purpose of you being here right now? Okay, so you have an accident, accident scene. Go deal with it. Okay. This accident is said and done. These records are now made. Then walk away. Up. You're dismissed. Okay. I don't need you here. Okay. Leave. Wait. I'm go. not leaving anywhere. You need to I'm go. A federal lawsuit filed by Rolando Reyes against Lake Jackson and several of its current and former police officers have been settled. Here is a recap of the incident and full testimony of now former Officer Cagle. What did you say now? I asked you why are you here? I said I'm taking photos. Okay. Are you allowed on this accident scene? That's what I'm asking you. You're asking me if I'm allowed to be here? Yes, sir. Okay. What do you think? Okay. I need you to leave, please. Until I'm not going to leave. Mendoza. Your accident scene. He's taking pictures of other people's vehicles and license plates, which is against the law. What are you doing around here? Taking photography. Okay. Not here. Not right now, okay? Okay. What are you going to do if I don't stop? Okay. Look, all I'm asking, you can do what you need to do is go over there. You're not going to stop me from taking photography. Okay. Do you work for the newspaper? I don't have to work for the newspaper to take public photography. Okay. But taking license plate uh, pictures of license plates, you are not allowed to do. You are also by law allowed to lie to me. That's incorrect information. No, I think you need to relearn you are, the law on that. You, you, you're, you, you, you actually can. Okay. And I can take all the videos of, of, of uh, license plates that I want. Okay. You go ahead and do that. I will. Do you have your ID on you? Do you have now your ID on you? Now you're on our accident scene, okay. so I want you to identify yourself. I want you to identify so, yourself right now. Officer Cagle. With Batch number? 635. And you? Officer Mendoza, 575. Now watch how I'm not going to give you my license. Okay. Then I need you to remove yourself from this I'm not going to remove myself from this accident scene. 455. I need a supervisor out here at this scene now. You wanted to come here and intimidate no, me? Sir, let me tell you something right now. No, sir, let me this is not this your accident scene. This is all public okay. property, okay? You're coming up here taking photos of pictures? Yeah. First of all, lower your voice now. Sir, I'm talking the same way. No, no, I'm no. With. You you came here with a bad energy. No, I asked what you were doing. You're going to lower your voice now when you and talk you to me. You sat here and said, I can be wherever I want. Every, anywhere I want, okay. yes. All I asked you is why you're here taking photographs of other people's None property. Of your business oh okay yeah so are you going to identify yourself since you're part of this Absolutely accident now? Not. okay and why is that because you are not my dad who do you think you are and you do not belong in this accident i can be anywhere i want you need to leave i'm not leaving mendoza sir i'm not Wait. leaving just i'm not leaving okay, all we're at you're not going to tell me to, you're not going to intimidate me okay. out of here I don't understand what the purpose is. For what is your here. purpose of you being here right now? Okay, so you have an accident, accident scene. Go deal with it. Okay. This accident is said and done. These records are now made. Then walk away. Up. You're dismissed. Okay. I don't need you here. Okay. So this accident scene is over. Why are then you here? Then get the f out of here. I don't okay. need you here. You're trying to intimidate me? Two officers with guns? No one's touching anything on that. Then back away. Because if I had come to you this close, you'd have arrested my ass. You're but already you on to... our scene, which is interfering in my be investigation. Here. I'm not a I'm not interfering Sir, with any of your shit. You need to put your finger out of my face. You need to back okay. up for me then. I don't need to back up. This is my scene. This is his scene. No, fuck you and your scene, man. I'm okay, standing you need right to here. Leave now. I'm not leaving anywhere. Leave. I'm go. not leaving anywhere. You need to I'm go. I'm not leaving anywhere. I'm not. What year did your, you reactivate your peace officer license? The end of 2012. Okay, and what did you have to do in order to reactivate it? There were certain courses that T. Cole's mandated that I go take, and then I had to re-challenge the T. Cole test. You had to, you called I it? I had to go, sorry. You called it re-challenge the T. Cole test? Yes, sir. Okay, what is that? Any police officer has to take the T. Cole exam. Uh, after they get out of the academy, it's about a 300 question exam that they have to take. It's over different penal codes, CCP, traffic, and then you have to take that test as well. So that's where, after I finished the mandated courses that they required me to take, I was eligible to retake T. Cole. Okay. And we've been saying uh, T. Cole a couple of times. Do you know what T. Cole stands for? Texas Commission on Law Enforcement Education. Okay, and that's, uh, you understand, to be the uh, state agency for Texas law enforcement officers? Yes, sir. And uh, so when you took these courses to reactivate your license in 2012, did you go to uh, school to do that? No, sir. Okay. 
okay, how do you accomplish those courses? Most of them were through other agencies that put on a training for it. Some were also online. Okay. And so basically you went and sought out these courses yourself uh, to, to complete? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, so 2012, you reactivated your uh, peace officer license. Where did you go work? To Missouri County Sheriff's Office. What did you do uh, at the sheriff's office? I started out in the jail. I was there four months, and then I went to patrol. Okay, so you started out as a, I guess, a jailer? Yes, sir. And then you moved over to patrol? Yes, sir. How long were you on patrol for? Three or four years. Okay. Uh, and then what did you do after that three or four year period? I transferred over to the mental health division for six years. Okay, it's still at a Brazoria County? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, what is required to transfer from patrol to the mental health unit? There's different courses you can, but you don't have to take. They do an oral board, and then the sergeant of the mental health division uh, picks who he chooses he wants to in that division. Okay, did you take any courses specific for the mental health division? Yes, sir. And what courses were there? There's different mental health courses. I don't remember the exact names to them. Okay. And then uh, you said you were at the mental health division for how long? About six years. Okay. And after that six-year period, what did you do next? That's when I resigned from Missouri County, and I went to uh, Lake Jackson Police Department. Okay. What was the purpose of resigning from Missouri County? I wanted to further my uh, law enforcement. So it was a time to where Missouri County was having issues. So I decided to transfer out to a smaller department. Okay. And were you, uh, did you leave Brazoria County because of any discipline you've received? No, sir. Okay, during your, uh, what, six, four, uh, over 10 years, is it over 10 years? It's right at 10 years. Okay. So your 10 year period with Brazoria County, uh, were there ever any complaints made against you? To my knowledge, no. Okay. And uh, did you receive any uh, written uh, admonishments during your time at Pretoria County? For complaints or? For any time? For, there was one report that was messed up that I was, uh, it's a verbal warning. There's three different levels that they have. It's verbal, then a write-up, then discipline. Okay, so you didn't really receive any write-ups while you were at Missouri County? No, sir. Okay. And then, uh, do you have a gap of time between the Missouri County Sheriff's Office and when you went to Lake Jackson? Two days. Two days? Yes, sir. So you knew, I guess you knew you wanted to go to Lake Jackson? Yes, sir. I actually gave Missouri County a three-week notice before I left. Okay. And then, uh, how long were you at... Uh, Lake Jackson Police Department? Seven months. Seven months. What was your position? Patrol. Okay, it was patrol the entire time? Yes, sir. Right, during your seven months then with uh, Lake Jackson, what kind of training uh, did you receive? Uh, there was a use of force training, uh, defensive tactics training. I actually taught a uh, mental health class. It's the 40-hour course that TCOL mandates that officers have. And then I've done a few online, quite a few online, actually. Okay. The use of force training you received, what, uh, tell me about that. Who gave that training? <coughs> there was two different instructors. One was from Freeport. I don't remember his name. And I think he was the only one that did the use of force. Was that something that the city of Lake Jackson required or something to call required? Neither. It was a course that I took, I asked to take. Okay, so the course was on use of force generally, not, for example, city policy. I, I don't know on that. Okay. I don't know on their policy. I just, I saw the course come up and I asked if I could take it. Okay. And the use of force, uh, how long was that? How long was that course? I think it was just one day. And did you go to Freeport for that course, or did the instructor come from Freeport to the city of Lake Jackson? City of Lake Jackson. They, Freeport to Lake Jackson. 
Okay. And so did other City of Lake Jackson police officers uh, also attend that course? Yes, sir. Okay. And where was that course held exactly? In the training room at the police station. Okay. Uh, the police <coughs> station of City of Lake Jackson? Yes, sir. Okay. And um, do you recall if uh, Officer Mendoza was present at that training? I know he was in one of my training classes. I just don't remember which one it is. Okay. Now, um, when you... So when you came to the City of Lake Jackson Police Department, uh, were you provided with any information as to what the city's or the police department's uh, policies were? I know they gave me a hand out of a bunch of paperwork, but I don't remember. I, I just, I was more into getting through the training program. I don't remember if I've looked at everything or not. Okay, when you said you were looking to get through the training program, what do you mean? The FTO program. Okay, is the FT, what do you mean by FTO? Any field training officer. It, whenever you go to another department, they still have to put you through their training to make sure you're within, that you understand their policy, or not policies, but their um, report writing, their computers, all that. Okay, were you an FTO with Brazoria County? Yes, sir. Okay. And so, in order to be an FTO, uh, is that something that's recognized? If somebody looks at your peace officer credentials, can somebody tell that you're an FTO, or is that something that's department specific? No, sir. They, it's through TCO. It's a TCO course that log, they log it on your record. Okay. So, you have to go take specific TCO courses to be qualified as a FTO? Uh, that's different departments have different ways of doing that. Okay. Some departments they teach it themselves. Sometimes you can get it online. Okay. But at the end of the day, the course is still credential by T. Cole. Yes, sir. Okay. So you uh, accomplish at Brazoria County the courses necessary to to be qualified as an FTO. Yes, sir. Okay, do you recall what year that was? No, sir. I don't. It it was when I was on patrol, so it would be. I don't remember. It was before I went to mental health, I know that. Okay. And are you required to take any additional courses going forward, like annual requirements, once you become an FTO? No, sir. Okay. So then, you're, so then when you leave Brazoria County, you go to the city of Lake Jackson, your intent was to be in a FTO position? No, sir. Okay. So. What training did you have to do then? Well, let me back up. Why, why did you have to go through a training program for the city of Lake Jackson? That's any police department. If you transfer to another police department, they're going to put you through their FTO program. Okay, so regardless if you are an FTO officer or not? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, were you in an FTO position with the city of Lake Jackson? No, sir. Okay. But you still went through the training course? Yes, sir. Who put on the training course? They put you with different officers that you ride with that are FTO certified. Okay. And how long is that training program? It can go from 60 to 90 days. Okay. How long were you involved in the uh, city of Lake Jackson FTO program? training program? I believe it was 9 to 11 weeks. 9 to 11 weeks? Yes, sir. Okay, do you recall uh, which officers, uh, I guess what FTO officers you were working with with the city of Lake Jackson during that 9 to 11 week period? I had uh, Officer Ryan, uh, Corporal Dunn, and there was one more. He was in the traffic unit. I I can't remember his name. Okay. And uh, during this 9-11 uh, week uh, training program, would you go over or, or were there any discussions or any type of training on the written policies that the city of Lake Jackson expected you to understand? We went over, I know the use of force continuum we went over how they expected their reports to be written. 
how evidence was collected and logged in and how your PCs were written on their side. And when you say PCs, what do you mean? Probable cause affidavits. Okay. And so were these just, uh, so this is basically where you were paired up with an FTO? Yes, sir. Okay, so this wasn't like a classroom environment type instruction? No, sir. Okay. At any time, did you have to sign any documents uh, indicating that you understood or that you read and understood what the City of Lake Jackson Police Department policies were? No, sir. Uh, during your seven-month period, were you ever uh, required to attend any specific City of Lake Jackson Police Department training? What do you mean by that? So, uh, for example, you mentioned that T. Cole uh, requires you to do annual training, right? Yes, sir. Did the City of Lake Jackson Police Department require any specific training? In the time that I was there, there was never a requirement for any training. Okay. And so, uh, it, so when you were, uh, so you came over to the City of Lake Jackson to do patrol, correct? Yes, sir. At that time, what was the, uh, do you recall the first, uh, I guess the first time you went out by yourself on patrol while employed with the city of Lake Jackson? It was close to Halloween. Halloween of uh, what year? 20, 2021. 2021, okay. Yes, sir. So prior to uh, October 2021, uh, when was the last time you had gone out on patrol by yourself? That'd be before I went to mental health in Missouri County. Okay, so six or seven years prior? Yes, sir. On patrol. On patrol. When you were uh, with the mental health unit, uh, were you responsible for uh, like accident scenes? No, sir. Okay. Were you responsible for uh, securing crime scenes? No, sir. What was your uh, what what were your duties and responsibilities generally with the mental health division with Brazoria County? We did anywhere from evaluating correction, interviewing people to see if they met the criteria by the state, and if they did, then they were uh, escorted by us to a hospital so they can get treatment. We also dealt with. Um, children and adult that were suicidal, uh, they could have been homicidal as well. We dealt strictly with mental health is all we dealt with. Okay. Uh, did that require you to put uh, handcuffs on individuals? Yes, sir. Okay, were you uh, required to evaluate uh, probable cause? Sir, we did not evaluate. We only interviewed. Okay. So. Uh, so, but when you were on patrol with the city of Lake Jackson, for example, were you required to evaluate probable cause? Yes, sir. Okay. And, but you did not have that same role uh, with the mental health division with Brazoria County? As with traffic or crime scenes, no. Okay. Uh, do you know why we are here today? Yes, sir. Okay. And that's uh, from the incident uh, on March 4th, 2022? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, let's see here. So it looks like you were out at um, around 1.30 p.m. at 104 Highway 332. Is that correct? I know I was out at 332 or Highway 332. I don't know the numbers to it. Okay, and what was your reason for being out there? Because of the minor accident. Okay, so uh, were you like how how that work? Did dispatch say, "Hey, we got a report," or were you specifically tasked? How did you end up out there? Um, I was actually advised by Corporal Ryan to go out there to help Officer Mendoza because it was at the uh, the exit off of 288 on the feeder road and the, also the exit at the mall. It's a high traffic area right there. So that's why I went to the scene. Okay. 
And uh, did you go out there? Uh, what, what kind of vehicle did you take out there? I have. There was a Chevy Tahoe. I don't know the year. Okay, but it was a, a marked police vehicle. Yes, sir. Okay, and where did you park the vehicle? I originally parked it at the uh, exit uh, from the mall onto the feeder road, but then within maybe a few minutes, I moved it further back because cars were still trying to come around the unit. So we were trying to block that exit off out of the mall so they couldn't come out. Okay. So were you successful in blocking the traffic over there? From coming out? Yes, sir. Okay. So um, you get out on the scene. Uh, is Officer Mendoza the only one out there? Yes, sir. From the city of Lake Jackson? Police Department, yes, sir. Okay. And, uh, and did you talk to him about what you needed help with or... No, sir. Officer Mendoza was already talking to the people in the accident. Okay, so you understood when you got out there that you that you would help with uh, traffic control. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, did you talk to? Did you have any discussions at that point with Officer Mendoza? We inter inter talked with each other throughout the whole scene, but it wasn't in relation to the accident completely. Okay. Well, you got out to the scene were the wreckers or the tow trucks already present no sir okay and so at some point uh you're alerted to uh the presence of uh, mr reyes yes sir okay how did you become of uh, mr reyes uh the female that was in the accident looked at me and asked me who that was so that's when i confronted mr reyes and when you observed uh, Mr. Reyes, what was he doing? He was leaning or standing at the curb next to the uh, stop sign. Okay. And was he was he in the roadway or out of the roadway? He was on the curb, which is right there at the exit of the the mall. Okay. So he was standing uh, on a curb. Yes, sir. Was he in the road? No, sir. Okay. And uh, was the traffic or the road? Uh, blocked to was the road blocked to vehicle or traffic at that time? At that time, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so, was there uh, any concern uh, for safety reasons where uh, Ray, Mr. Reyes was standing? Yes, sir. What was the concern? The exit coming off the freeway was just to the north of where he was standing. Okay. The, the exit was north of the freeway where he was seen. The e yeah, so the exit from, fr uh, I call it Highway 288. It's also Highway 332. The exit off of that freeway is just north of where the accident had occurred. Okay, so the area he was standing uh, on the curb, you, you say he was standing near a stop sign, right? Yes, sir. Okay, is it your understanding that vehicles could have approached that stop sign? If they would have rear-ended one of the uh, um, fire apparatuses then or fire trucks, not a regular truck, but a regular pickup, it could have ran into him, me, or anybody else there. Okay, but that's because there was a uh, there was a fire truck that was blocking that intersection. They weren't blocking the intersection. They were just blocking that one lane. Okay, the the one lane near the stop sign. Yes, where sir. Mr. Reyes was standing. Yes, sir. Uh, so you're when you approached uh, Mr. Reyes, uh, well, before you approached Mr. Reyes, when you saw him uh, standing on the curb, how far away was he uh, from the accident scene? Maybe five feet. Five feet? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and five feet from the stop sign, so what, what marker? on the roadway where that stop sign is is where um, the male subject was exiting out that's where the accident occurred was at that stop sign okay and, but how do you know that the vehicles were still there uh, intertwined with each other okay so you understood that uh, mr reyes was standing five feet from the vehicles from where the accident occurred yes sir Okay, and so the lady that alerted you to Mr. Reyes's presence, was she uh, closer or further away to the accident scene? She was further away from the accident scene. Than Mr. Reyes? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Uh, were there other individuals out there as well? The other gentleman that was in the accident, there was myself, Officer Mendoza, and the other two uh, assistant chiefs that were there. Okay. And so the, the, in, the male individual that was involved in the accident, uh, was he standing closer or further away to the accident? He was further away as well. Okay. So uh, your testimony is that Mr. Reyes was the closest out of the other two to the accident? Where the accident occurred, yes, sir. Okay. And at the time you observed Mr. Reyes, um, what was your what was your responsibility on that scene? Was the safety and security of that scene? Okay, safety and security. Uh, what does that entail? Make sure that the scene is safe, that no one else gets injured there, and make sure nothing else gets damaged. Okay. And so Mr. Reyes was standing on a curb with a, a I guess, a grass easement area. Right? Yes, sir. And that's also that grass, that same grass easement, isn't that where the other two individuals were also standing? They were further south. Okay, but they were still in that grass area? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and when you first observed Mr. Reyes, what did it appear that he was doing? Standing there. Doing what? Just standing there. Okay, just standing there. Uh, did you observe him uh, with his phone out? I think he had his phone in his hand, but I didn't pay attention to where his phone was. Okay, so your testimony right now is that your concern was with him standing where he was at? With his safety, yes, sir. Okay, did you ever relay that to him? I walked up to him and asked him if I could help him. Okay, and uh, do you recall telling him what, his, uh, what your concern was? I don't remember, sir. Okay. So, uh, what is your understanding? Well, let me, let me ask you this. Um, is it your understanding that it's against the law to take photos of license plates from public spaces? That was a, a mistake that I made. Okay. So, on March 4th, 2022, uh, you thought that it was against the law to take photos of license plates? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, didn't you observe Mr. Reyes appear uh, to take photos of the accident scene? Can you say that again, please? Didn't you observe Mr. Reyes taking photos of the accident scene? I did not observe him taking photos, no. Okay. So uh, why would you have told him then that he was not permitted to take uh, pictures of license plates. Sir, I don't remember exactly how the conversation was. Okay, but do you recall saying something to him about taking pictures of license plates? Yes, sir. Okay, why would you have told him that? Sir, I don't recall exactly how that conversation came up. Okay. Um, have you seen uh, videos from uh, this incident? Yes, sir. Okay, did that include did that include observing your body worn camera? Yes, sir. Uh, did you also see Mr. Mendoza's yes, body worn camera? Yes, sir. Uh, did you observe the video taken from uh, the female bystander? Yes, sir. And you also saw the video taken from Mr. Reyes? Besides what's on the internet? No. Okay, but you saw the video that was posted on the internet? Some of it, yes, sir. Okay, some of it. Uh, and you watched uh, those videos a couple of times, right? Uh, just my body camera and Officer Mendoza's body camera. Okay, did you review those body cameras or, or any body camera uh, in preparation of an incident report? Yes, sir. Okay, did you review those uh, cameras uh, in preparation of... Uh, the, uh, like Jackson Police Department's investigation into the incident? I don't know what their investigation was. Uh, I went in there to do my statement is the reason that I watched the videos. Okay, to make, uh, when you say your statement, uh, do you mean the statement uh, to the city of Lake Jackson or your incident report? It would have been my statement, or my incident report. Okay. 
Uh, and were you interviewed at all by any Texas Ranger? Yes, sir. Okay, and did you review uh, your body worn camera prior to that interview? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, prior to uh, today, or, or in preparation of today, did you view any video? Miss Bonds, myself, and Officer Mendoza. Okay, so when you say Miss Bonds, that, that's the female. Bond. That's the female. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, okay, so you've watched the videos uh, since March 2022 a number of times, right? Not a number of times. I've seen Miss Bonds once, mine three times, and Mendoza's three times. Okay, so there was, uh, you had to watch the video, or at least the body worn cameras, uh, to prepare an incident report? Yes, sir. You watched the videos to prepare your statements? Uh, to the uh, City of Lake Jackson Police Department. That's the same time. Okay. So you watched it just once? Yes, sir. Two. Okay. I saw the video camera once. And then you watched the uh, body worn camera uh, in preparation for your interview with the Texas Rangers? No, sir. No, you didn't watch the No, video? sir. Okay. Uh, but then you watched it. Did you watch any of the video uh, once you received notice of this lawsuit? with my attorney. Okay. And did you watch the video uh, in preparation of responding to discovery? We said you discovery. We didn't have since you discovered yet. Oh, we did. Did you watch the video in preparation? Uh, the one time with my attorney. Just one time? Yes, sir. Okay. But then you watched it in preparation for today? Yes, sir. Okay. So, out of the times of watching uh, your body worn camera from this incident, uh, you can't recall what, uh, why you told Mr. Reyes it was illegal to photograph license plates? No, sir. Uh, I mean, I, I would have to watch it again. Okay. What was your understanding of, um, of an individual's uh, right to film police officers performing their duties in public. I and, and to clarify the question, you're asking him what was at that time? At that time, correct. 2022. At that time, on March 4th, 2022, what did you understand was Mr. Reyes's right to film police officers performing their duties in public? I had no training on that, to my knowledge. So I'm not 100% sure. Okay, did you receive any kind of briefing at all from any uh, police officer or employee with the city of Wake Jackson? Since that incident? No, uh, prior to that incident. No, sir. Okay, how about since that incident? No, sir. Okay. So, um, did you understand at the time on March 4th, 2022, that Mr. Reyes was filming his interaction with you? Yes, sir. He had his phone in his hand. Okay. And, uh, and you understood he was filming? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, did you understand at that time that he had a right to film that interaction? It, I wasn't concerned about him filming. Okay, you weren't concerned at all with him filming? Not whenever I was talking to Mr. Reyes, no, sir. Okay, so uh, why did you approach Mr. Reyes then and tell him he was breaking the law by photographing license plates? I confronted Mr. Reyes because Ms. Vaughn asked me who he was. Okay, was uh, Mr. Reyes standing in a public space? Yes, sir. Uh, did Ms. Vaughn uh, have some kind of uh, right or control uh, to have Mr. Reyes removed from that area? She didn't ask him to be removed. Okay. So, Ms. Vaughn told you she was concerned, or she didn't know who Mr. Reyes was. She asked who he was. Okay. And at that point, uh, you determined... Why, why did you approach Mr. Reyes? 
I just walked up to him to ask him if he needed any help, if there was something I could do for him. Okay. And uh, what did he tell you? He actually said, hold on a minute. Okay. And um, was Mr. Reyes at that point, uh, to your understanding, uh, was he suspected of committing any crime? No, sir. And so is it your understanding that Mr. Reyes had to respond to your questions? Yes, sir. He did? No, he did not. Okay, he did not. Okay. Um, <coughs> at any point, did you tell Mr. Reyes that he needed to leave for safety reasons? I don't recall if I said it that way. Okay. Uh, do, you, do you know if uh, you told Mr. Reyes anything at all uh, concerning safety? I don't recall. Okay. At some point, uh, you asked Mr. Reyes to leave? Yes, sir. And he didn't leave? Yes, sir. Uh, and then you called over uh, Mr. Mendoza, Officer Mendoza? Yes, sir. Why, uh, what was the purpose for calling over Officer Mendoza? It was Officer Mendoza was primary on the scene. Okay. Uh, at that point, when you called over Officer Mendoza, were you uh, suspecting? Uh, were you suspecting Mr. Reyes of committing any crime? Hmm. No, sir. On March 4th, 2022, what was your understanding of a citizen's right to criticize, to verbally criticize police officers? I have no recollection of any of that. Okay. That wasn't uh, part of your, uh, you don't recall seeing any t pole courses? No, sir. So, uh, when Officer Mendoza, do you, do you recall Officer Mendoza uh, stating during the interaction uh, that the accident scene was, or the accident investigation was completed? You would have to ask Officer Mendoza that. I don't, you don't remember. No, sir. Okay. What, um, what do you recall from the interaction with uh, Mr. Reyes? At which time? Well, tell me your understanding based on your recollection what the conversation was between you and Mr. Reyes. I know I asked Mr. Reyes multiple times to leave and he refused to leave. Okay. Uh, what, help me understand, what authority uh, did you have to have Mr. Reyes leave? He's on the uh, scene of an accident, which is, is a safety issue. So that's why we were asking him to leave. Okay, did you tell Mr. Reyes that he needed to leave because it was a safety issue? That's been asked and answer. I'll let him answer it again one more time. I do not recall if I said safety or not. And your understanding is that he was standing, I guess, closer than the other two individuals that were on the same grass area? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, what was your understanding of what still needed to be done with the accident investigation? The wreckers were starting to pick up the vehicles, but they were still in the roadway. Okay. And uh, we have the video of it. The wreckers were, uh, they weren't in the lane nearest to the stop sign, were they? I don't recall exactly where they were positioned. I know they were next to each other. Okay. All right, so if you recall the interaction being you asked Mr. Reyes to leave, he didn't leave, uh, what happened next? We continue to ask him to leave and he refused. He got, I mean, he was cussing everything else, 
but at some point uh, you made uh, the decision to uh, did you make the decision to just subdue Mr. Reyes or to detain Mr. Reyes? No, sir. I made the decision to try to escort him off the scene to back him up. Officer Mendoza's video, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and you've seen the uh, second amended complaint that we filed in this matter? I would have to get with the attorney on that. I, I don't, I've had so much paperwork, I don't know. Okay, so are you aware that you grabbed Mr. Reyes by the neck? No, sir. Are you aware that you knocked his phone out of his hand? No, sir. Okay. Um, when you say at, that you were going to escort Mr. Reyes, um, how did you envision doing that? I placed my left hand on his right side and told him he needed to leave. Okay, so that's how you envisioned doing it? No, sir, that's, ex that's how I did it. Okay, so you put your hand on his right side. Which hand did you use? My left hand Okay. on his right side. Did you see uh, Mr. Reyes uh, reach for anything? His right arm came up into my left arm twice. Okay, so did you see Mr. Reyes reach for anything? I was looking at Mr. Reyes. I just saw the motion of his hand. Okay. The motion of his hand. And this is after you made contact with him? Yes, sir. After I touched him on the side. And uh, when you saw the motion of his hand, what, uh, what ended up happening? After that is whenever I reached up to grab him, to take him to the ground. Because I don't know how the phone fell, but his left hand started coming down towards my right side as I was coming down with him. Okay. And so uh, at the time you decided to put your left hand on Mr. Reyes' right side, uh, did you suspect Mr. Reyes of committing a crime? Yes, sir. And what crime is that? Uh, he was interfering in our investigation. Okay. What investigation was he interfering with? The traffic accident. Okay. Uh, and by this point, though, uh, did you hear Officer Mendoza say that the investigation was completed? I, at that time, I don't know exactly when or how he said it. So, uh, you were not responsible for the accident investigation, were you? No, sir. Okay, so uh, the decision as to whether or not the investigation was ongoing, uh, was that with Officer Mendoza? As long as the scene is still there, the accident investigation is continuing. Okay. I don't know when Officer Mendoza stated that the accident scene was complete. Would it surprise you if Officer Mendoza said that uh, while standing right next to you during the interaction with Mr. Reyes? What do you mean? I'm not understanding your question on that. Sure. Uh, you watched the body worn camera a couple of times, right? Yes, sir. Do you recall uh, when you called Mr. Officer Mendoza over, Officer Mendoza informed Mr. Reyes, while standing next to you, that the accident investigation was completed. After the second time that I asked Officer Mendoza, the first time I asked Officer Mendoza, he never said that. Maybe after the second time, it is possible. Okay, but so you recall Officer Mendoza relaying that the accident investigation. I remember that comment. I remember that was said. Yes. Okay, and you and that occurred prior to you uh, putting your left hand on Mr. Reyes's right side? I don't recall when, when that was said, when I placed my hand on him. Okay. So if, uh, if Officer Mendoza had stated prior to you making physical contact with <coughs> Mr. Reyes that the accident investigation was completed, is it your understanding that Mr. Reyes would be interfering with the accident scene? 
Sir, he was interfering with the accident scene be before Officer Mendoza said that it was over. How is how is Mr. Reyes interfering with the accident scene? Because uh, we've asked him to leave multiple times and he has refused to do so. Okay, did you ask anyone else to leave? There was no one, yes, actually I did. There was another female before Mr. Reyes came up that was trying to walk up to her sister and we asked her to leave. She also left. And her sister was Ms. Vaughn, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, that female, she actually entered into the roadway, didn't she? Which roadway? That female that you were talking about, when she went to approach her sister, she actually walked onto the roadway, didn't she? She came from the mall. She is one of the ones that almost hit the assistant chief's truck. Okay. And so she was traveling by foot to her sister? Yes, sir. And she, when you approached her, she was on the roadway? Yes, sir. Okay. So she, uh, but Mr. Reyes, he never stepped on the roadway, did he? No, sir. And matter of fact, you didn't even, uh, you weren't even aware of Mr. Reyes standing by a stop sign until uh, Ms. Vaughn raised that to your attention, right? That's correct. So Mr. Reyes, uh, he wasn't uh, preventing you from uh, doing your job, was he? No, sir. So, um, put your left hand on Mr. Reyes's right side, and uh, you see what appears to be uh, Mr. Reyes uh, with his with his uh, be his right arm. His right arm up. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And at that point, uh, you make the decision to uh, bring Mr. Reyes down to the ground. Yes. Sir. Okay. What is the tactic called? How you brought him to the ground? It's a defensive tactic. It's you reach up, grab a hold of their shoulder area, and you pull them down. Okay. And uh, Officer Mendoza, did Officer Mendoza assist you with the takedown? I know Officer Mendoza was there. I don't know when he got involved. Okay. And uh, then once, um, then once Mr. Reyes is down on the ground. Uh, what are you doing next? We're trying to place his hands behind his back. Okay, and uh, are you sitting on Mr. Reyes? No, sir. Okay. Uh, are you kneeling over him? I was leaned over him with my legs behind him. Okay, but you didn't have any body weight on him? No, sir. Okay. And uh, who, who was, uh, whose cuffs uh, were you trying to get onto Mr. Reyes? I don't remember if they were mine or Officer Mendoza's. Okay. Um, prior to uh, placing the handcuffs on, well, I guess uh, handcuffs eventually end up on Mr. Reyes? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, When's the last time you had to uh, take down somebody prior to March 4, 2020? Sir, I don't recall. Okay. Did you have to uh, take anybody down uh, other than Mr. Reyes uh, during the seven months you were with the city of Wake Yes, sir. Okay. Um, did, you, uh, did you have to take anybody down when you were with the uh, Mental Health Division with Rosaria County? Yes, sir. Okay. And so... Your understanding was you, well, you tell me why, uh, why did you make the decision to switch from physically removing Mr. Reyes from the area to then taking him down to the ground and putting cuffs on him? When I saw his hand move, move forward, that's when Mr. Reyes took that stance of he's not moving. And at that time, I felt the safety was enough. And the fact that he came up and hit my hand and reaching for something, I didn't know what. 
it was a split second that I reached up, grabbed a hold of his shoulder area up here, and I pulled him to the ground. And at that point, uh, what crime did you think Mr. Reyes was committing? He had already the, uh, the refusing to leave after he's been told to do so. Okay, what, uh, what offense is that? It, it, it's it's in the transportation. I don't remember the exact note, uh, the code to it, but it's 542 point something. And it's whenever there's a police officer, crossing guard, or anybody else that is dealing with traffic, if we ask them to leave, if they refuse to leave, then they're interfering. Okay, was, uh, so we've already established that Mr. Reyes was not in the roadway, right? Yes, sir. Uh, at any time was he impeding traffic? No, sir. Okay. And uh, do you know if Mr. Reyes was ever charged with a uh, violation of the transportation code? I have no idea. Did anyone ask you uh, what crime you thought Mr. Reyes was committing? I remember, I believe it was either Corporal Dunn or Sergeant Nacestra had asked. prepare an incident report for this matter? No, sir. Why not? Because I was told not to. Who told you that? Uh, Corporal, or er, Lieutenant Crow means. Crow means that's spelled uh, C-R-O-M-E-E-N-E-S? I have no idea. Okay. I have misspelled his name I don't know how many times. Okay, and so uh, normally, well, let me back up. You made the decision to um, did you make the decision to detain or arrest Mr. Reyes? It was just detain him. Okay, so even though you thought he was violating the transportation code, uh, you did not intend to arrest him. I had no time did I ever say he was under arrest. But what is what did you intend to do? To, to detain him, to get the situation calmed down to where we can address everything. And uh, so normally when uh, you detain somebody uh, or put somebody in handcuffs, is it your understanding? Let me scratch it. Are you required to prepare an incident report every time uh, you put somebody in handcuffs? Yes, sir. Okay. Can I? Sure. Not every time that we put somebody in handcuffs, if we detain them, um, usually there's an incident report, yes. It d explains because we have technically that's part of a use of force because you're detaining them you're restricting them from their movements so yes i've always done an incident report on it okay is it your understanding uh that the city of wade jackson uh, police department policy would have required you to prepare an incident report yes sir okay. and uh did you uh on march uh, 4 2022 uh did you intend to prepare an incident report yes sir okay uh, when were you told uh, by Lieutenant Crow, how do you say his name? Crow means. Crow means uh, to not prepare an incident report. That was on the Wednesday. So this. Uh, I don't remember the date. We we can calculate it up. Okay. So March fourth was a Friday. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, had you prepared any draft incident reports? Yes, sir. Okay. So there's a draft incident report in the system. No, sir. Not in y'all's. Not in Lake Jackson. Okay. It was done at my house. Okay, you, so you had the ability to prepare a draft incident report at your house? It's not on the letterheads of Lake Jackson. It's just basically a Word document that I typed up and it was having, and I had it print out. Okay, is that something uh, you normally did while at the city of Lake Jackson? No, sir, usually it was done at the city. Okay, uh, but uh, why did you uh, want to draft a Word document? Because I was told before I even left the hospital that I was uh, suspended under internal affairs. And about two hours later, one of the officers came and picked me up, took me to the PD, and I was told not to speak to no one, grab my stuff, and go home. Okay. And who told you that? I can't. It was either Corporal Ryan or Sergeant Assessor. I can't remember which one. They were both there in the office when I grabbed my things. 
And so uh, when you got home, uh, is that when you drafted or started drafting? No, sir. It was Monday afternoon, I believe. Okay. It was either Monday or Tuesday afternoon. Okay, so Monday or Tuesday afternoon, you decide uh, that you wanted to draft or put in writing uh, your version of events that would occur? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and uh, do you still have a copy of that draft? Unfortunately, sir, it's been nine months. I don't, I doubt it. Okay. I'm sure, I, I never saved it on the computer, never saved it on a jump drive. So I'm sure it's already been shredded. No, sir. Have you had a chance to review uh, the incident reports that were uh, prepared in this incident? I have not read every single one of them. I don't know who's written an incident report or who hasn't. Okay. How often, well, how quickly after an incident are you uh, required normally or expected to prepare an incident report? Usually we do the incident report right then and there. Okay, so you knew when you were told at the hospital that you were suspended that you were not going to be able to prepare a report right away? Oh, I thought I was going to be able to go to the PD and still type one. Okay. And then when did you find out that you were not going to be able to do that? As soon as I walked in the PD. And that was on March 4th? That's on March 4th. Okay. And you were told to leave? Yes, sir. I was told to gather my belongings that were there on the floor in the sergeant's office and to leave. Do not speak to anybody with the Lake, uh, city of Lake Jackson. Okay. Prior to this incident, uh, were you expected to work that Saturday or Sunday? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, which day? Both days. Okay. Uh, but then as a result of this, you didn't go into work? No, sir. I was suspended. Okay. And then uh, how did you end up speaking with Lieutenant Cronies on that Wednesday? Actually, I spoke with Lieutenant Cromings on a Monday and Tuesday, and then I showed up on Wednesday and spoke with him in person. Okay, so you spoke to Lieutenant Cromings on Monday and Tuesday via phone? Yes, sir. Okay, and what were those conversations about? Lieutenant Cromings called me Monday and asked me if I was going to resign. I told him I had no intentions of resigning. I like the camaraderie. I like the guys that I work with. He said, okay. That was it. And then Tuesday, he ended up calling me again. I know I was going to lunch with a friend of mine, and that's when the uh, second uh, call came in. And he's the one that told me that it does not look good for me. I need to resign. I explained to him that I did not want to resign, that I wanted a meeting with the chief. And he said, come in tomorrow morning. So that's when I came in Wednesday morning. Okay. Um, and then, so you went in Wednesday morning. Uh, who did you speak with? I immediately went to Lieutenant Cromings. Okay. And uh, the discussion about uh, preparing an incident report came up? No, sir. It was the uh, about the resigning. Okay. Uh, because I, I'm trying to understand uh, when exactly you were told not to prepare an incident report. They, whenever they, whenever I resigned, I went in and talked to the chief, and he told me that it doesn't matter the outcome, I'm still going to be terminated. So if I don't resign right now, I will be fired. And so, uh, <coughs> not sure he answered your question. So uh, you met with the chief uh, on that Wednesday. Was Lieutenant Cronies in the room? Yes, sir. Okay. And who else was in the room? Ch uh, Assistant Chief Henderson was. Okay. So you had Henderson, Cronies, and uh, the chief. A Anderson. Anderson. Yes, sir. Got it. Not Henderson. No, sir. Okay. And uh, did Anderson or Cronies, Cronies say anything in that meeting? No, sir. It was just, well, Chief uh, Assistant Chief Anderson did. But it was already after I spoke with the Chief Kibito. So, and he, it was basically, there's nothing we can do, is all he would state. Okay, and so, um, do you feel like then that you uh, resigned? 
Yes, sir. I was forced to resign. Okay, because if you didn't resign, uh, you were under the impression you were going to get fired. Yes, sir. Okay, if uh, if you did get fired, uh, would that have impacted your peace officer license? Yes, sir. Okay, how so? It would have given me a dishonorable. A dishonorable. What? F five. Okay, and F that's when you say F five, that's the that's the form pertaining to your peace officer certification. That's the form when you leave a department. There's three criteria. There's honorable, general, or dishonorable. Okay, and so the dishonorable would have been the worst one. Yes, sir. Okay, if you received that dishonorable marking on your F five, uh, would what would have happened to your peace officer certification? I, I don't know. Okay, uh, would it have impacted your ability to uh, get employment at, as a peace officer in the state of Texas? Yes, sir. Okay, but if you by resigning. Uh, is there any kind of, uh, how, how is your termination described at that point? It's a general. Okay, and a general is not a dishonorable. No, sir. And actually, uh, sitting here today, uh, you still have your peace officer certification? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, is it your understanding that you can still be employed as a peace officer with a general marking on your F5? It's just as hard as it is being dishonorable. Okay, but it's not. Have you tried to apply to other pieces? Yes, sir. Uh, what other police departments have you applied to? Uh, Fort Bend and Stafford. Okay. And uh, was it because of your F5 uh, that, that were you told because of your general marking? No, sir. Okay. What, what did they tell you? They basically stated that due to this incident, they're not going to get it, get involved. So do you think if this incident, uh, this incident, do you mean the incident on March 4th, 2022? Or yes, sir. Okay. Have you talked to uh, any of those police departments about the litigation? <coughs> what do you mean? As in the civil litigation? Yes. Yes, sir, they know. Okay. And so do you think that uh, it had, had that also played a part? I don't know. Okay. But they did receive a copy of your F5, these other departments? That I don't know either. So how would they know that you received a uh, general? I was up front and honest with them. Okay. Because I assume they asked you then? I, I told them. All right. Uh, we've been going for about an hour. Uh, let's take a, uh, it's 11, 11. Let's take a brief uh, five minute break. Okay. Is it okay? okay. I can still see everything but the top of my head. <laughs> Time is 11.20 p.m. Is everyone ready? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cagle, um, I just want to clarify. I want to clarify. Uh, were you explicitly told by anyone at the City of Lake Jackson Police Department to not prepare an incident report? No, they did not tell me not to. Okay. I just want to clarify, but. You, it sounds like you, uh, in your discussion with the chief, said that you had not yet done an incident report. It was never brought up. It was only about me resigning or being terminated. Okay. You made a statement earlier, prior to the break, that you were told that it would, that it would not matter, it would not change the outcome. After I turned my resignation letter over to Lieutenant Colonel Means, I asked him if he needed my statement. And at that time, he said he does not need it. I've resigned. Okay. So you uh, you actually submitted a written uh, resignation letter? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Did you provide a copy of that to your attorney? No, sir. Okay. Uh, were you ever asked to make a written statement uh, by anybody at the city of Wake Jackson as a result of the March 4th, 2022 incident? No, sir. Okay. Um, were you ever interviewed by any city of Wake Jackson employee as a result of the March 4th, 2022 incident? No, sir. Okay. So uh, your understanding was... Uh, uh, that were you aware that there was an investigation in the March 4, 2022 incident? Well, like I said earlier, the, when the assistant chief said I was suspended under internal affairs, then I knew that investigation. Internal affairs is going to be an investigation. Okay, but no one, uh, no one from internal affairs reached out to you. For no, your, sir. Okay, so uh, were you given the opportunity to give your side of the story of? what occurred on March 4th, 2022? Besides what happened at that incident? No. Okay. Um, do you agree uh, with uh, the city of Lake Jackson's uh, determination in this case about, uh, let me back up. Did you see the, uh, have you seen the press release from the city of Lake Jackson on this matter? I was told from a friend about it, but I never looked at it myself. Okay. Uh, so are you aware that the city of Lake Jackson determined that uh, you uh, used uh, unreasonable force? I was never told that, no. Okay. Were you aware that the city of Lake Jackson uh, thought that you had a uh, erroneous application or understanding of the law? No, sir. If, uh, if the chief did not threaten uh, termination, uh, would you have resigned? No, sir. Okay. Uh, you were at the hospital. You also went to the hospital because of a uh, finger in injury. Yes, sir. Okay, what, uh, explain to me this injury. Whenever I was reaching down under Mr. Reyes's upper body um, to grab his arm to pull it back somehow my fingers these two got completely pulled backwards they were they said they were hyper extended and when you say these two what what two fingers on what hand it's my right hand little finger and ring finger okay uh, and uh, were you evaluated by a medical professional yes sir. okay uh, what was the uh, uh, what was the was the diagnosis? He said that they were hyperextended, that I needed to follow up with the, uh, I don't know what he called it, but like a specialist or something. Okay. Uh, did you ever follow up with anybody about your family? No, sir. Okay. Uh, was, was there any bleeding? I had cuts on my head and I had cuts on my hand, but I don't know where it came from. Um, would you consider the injury to your finger as a severe? I mean, it, to me, it's severe. It hurt, but I mean, it's not like life-threatening. No. Okay. And uh, you actually uh, were transported to the hospital uh, by uh, EMS, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And at this time, you also understood uh, that uh, Mr. Reyes had uh, was bleeding from his head. I knew that he had blood on his head. I believe it was the back of his head. Okay. Do you know how that injury occurred? No, sir, I don't. Uh, are you also aware that Mr. Reyes was complaining, complaining of not being able to breathe? He made that statement whenever I was finally, finally putting the handcuffs on him. Okay, is that because you were uh, sitting on him? I was not sitting on his upper part. I was sitting on his buttocks towards the lower, maybe the middle to the lower of his legs. Okay. Uh, but you understood that uh, he w did it appear he was laying on the on a raised curb from his waist up he was laying on the flat grass okay. it was around somewhere around his mid thighs maybe middle thighs that were on that curb okay so um, but uh, were you aware that there was not an EMS available for Mr. Reyes 
I have no idea, actually. Okay. So, do you know who made the decision to give the EMS uh, to you for your finger injuries as opposed to Mr. Reyes? No, sir, I don't. Okay. Uh, during uh, March 2022, uh, were you part of a, uh, uh, a motorcycle club affiliated with uh, law enforcement? Yes, sir. And what's that, what is that motorcycle club called? Los Canales. How do you spell that? It's uh, Los is L-O-S space C-O-R-N-A-L-E-S. Are you uh, still part of that club? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, have you had any discussions with uh, any of the club members about this incident? There's only one that I've spoken to, and, who and that's that? uh, Mario. Mario who? Escamilla. How do you spell that? Well, uh, I don't know. What did, uh, what did you say to Mario? I just advised him that this incident occurred, that it's going to an internal affairs. Um, at that point in time, I didn't know of the civil. Um, after went to through the Rangers uh, and the grand jury, I advised him that it was that part was done, but I think there's a civil. And, but we never got into conversations of what happened, how it happened, or nothing like that. Okay. So is the, did you have to talk to Mario about that because um, the outcome, for example, if there were any criminal charges, would that have impacted your ability to be part of the club? Yes, sir. Okay. Prior, um, okay. Now, you said uh, when you were asked to give a statement or talk about what occurred, the only time you were given that opportunity was actually out at the scene on March 4, 2022? It, it was the scene, and whenever the lieutenant showed up at the hospital, and then after that he asked me what had occurred, I explained to him, and then the assistant chief came in probably 30, 45 minutes later, and he asked how my hand was. I said, we're still waiting on x-rays, we don't know. And that's when he said, all right, well, you're suspended under internal affairs. So, well, somebody will come back and pick you up later. Okay. That was it. Did you, um, were you asked why uh, you uh, took Mr. Ray's to the ground? I think Lieutenant Cromings asked me um, but I don't remember the full extent of the conversation. Okay. I mean, it was whenever everything was still going on. Did you, uh, did you tell any of uh, your supervisors that you took Mr. Reyes to the ground uh, because he initiated contact with you? I don't remember exactly how I put it. I know I spoke with uh, Sergeant Assestra and of course Corporal Ryan because he was there. Um, I do know that I told him that he made a movement towards me and I don't remember exactly how I said it, but that was the reason I took him down. Okay, uh, so did you, uh, <clears throat> do you know if you would have told any of the corporals or sergeants or lieutenants uh, that Mr. Ray has initiated contact with you? I don't remember exactly how the conversation went. It, it, it was a, a quick talking with them and that's when they at last the next thing I know they refused to let me go to the hospital in one of the units they said get in the ambulance and then they took me to the hospital and I know that I told him he was pointing a lot and he was you know re felt like he was reaching and that was the reason I took him down but I don't remember if I said he touched me or not no okay but uh, sitting here today uh, is it your understanding uh, that Mr. Reyes touched you first? No, sir, I touched him on his left side first. Okay.
Do you know what injuries uh, Mr. Reyes sustained as a result of this incident? No, sir. I have no idea. Um, <clears throat> Do you feel bad for what you did to Miss Reyes? I feel bad for the whole situation. If uh, if you were aware uh, that Mr. Reyes had a right uh, to photograph and film. Uh, the accent scene from where he was standing, uh, would that have changed how you handled the situation? Sir, I can't speculate on that. I can't answer that. I, I don't honestly know. I haven't had the training on that, so I don't know how I would have talked to him. I still would have gone up to him. I still would have asked him if I could help him with something because he's still on that accident scene. Okay. So I guess I want to I want to clarify that as well. Uh, I asked you earlier if uh, when you first approached Mr. Reyes, whether you suspected him of committing any crime, um, and you said no, but then later you said he was interfering with the accent scene. So at what point uh, did you think that Mr. Reyes uh, started committing a crime? When he was asked to leave, and he refused to leave, that's when the interference has started beginning. And that's well that's when the interference happened. Okay. And is that irrespective of whether the accident investigation was complete or not? Sir the act is the whole time the accident wasn't complete. The accident scene was not completed. Okay. And and that was, uh, I recall, I, I guess another thing you mentioned out on the scene was uh, you called Officer Mendoza over because you said it was his scene, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so was Officer Mendoza the, uh, I guess, officer in charge? He was the primary officer. Okay. Uh, and so does he make a decision on who, who's in charge of the accident investigation? He, Officer Mendoza is in charge of writing the accident report, yes. Both officers are still there for the safety of that scene until all vehicles have left, records have left, and law enforcement has left. That's when the scene is complete. Okay, so there's not a designated officer uh, that dictates when the investigation is completed? That, like I just said, it's whenever everybody leaves the scene is when it's completed. Okay, so there's no act or declaration that says this is now complete? No, sir, because if Officer Mendoza decided to leave during the middle of the accident and that wreckers and the cars are still on the roadway, it's still an accident scene. We still have to protect it. You called a, uh, uh, before the physical uh, interaction with Mr. Reyes, when you were still speaking with him, uh, you radioed for a supervisor. Yes, sir. Uh, do you know how long it took a supervisor to get to the scene? No, sir, I don't. Okay. If uh, you knew a supervisor was on the way, why did you physically attempt to remove uh, Mr. Reyes? I didn't know if a supervisor was on the way or not. Just because I called it out over the radio doesn't mean that they either heard me or that they're responding. I don't know if they're on another call. So, uh, for clarification, uh, at any point on March 4th, 2022, did you intend to arrest Mr. Reyes? At the time of the incident, no. Okay. I was only detaining him. Okay. At any point, did, your, did you uh, make a decision or intend to arrest Mr. Reyes? Like I advised... When I detained him, I was that that's as far as I went because then I was pulled away from him from that point. Okay. 
So when he was on the ground, I detained him. I was talking to Corporal Ryan. That's when I got up and I walked off because Corporal Ryan took over the scene. From that point, I don't know what happened with uh, Mr. Reyes. Did you uh, ever make, did you make any recommendations to anybody about arresting Mr. Reyes? I advised Corporal Ryan and I think also Sergeant Assestra of the incident of what the charges possibly could be, but at no time did anybody ever say they're gonna arrest Mr. Reyes. Okay. Oh, can I? Yep, go ahead. To, in front of me, no one ever made that they were gonna arrest Mr. Reyes. Okay. Did you recall uh, when you were speaking to supervisors on the scene on March 4, 2022, what were you telling them uh, that Mr. Reyes was doing? I said that he uh, interfered in the investigation. He also uh, refused to ID. And then I don't remember whether I explained to him that he was reaching for something or that's whenever I just, he touched or, or somehow. Did you ever tell them um, that he was filming or photographing uh, license plates? I did say that. Okay. Uh, did, any, uh, did anybody uh, question you or, or inform you that that was not against the law? No, sir. Okay. Did anybody out on the scene, uh, any law enforcement officer, uh, question your decision to uh, take Mr. Reyes down to the ground? No, sir. Uh, does the city of Lake Jackson, at least in March 2022, uh, was there a uh, use of force report or form for use of force incidents? There is a use of force uh, continuum that uh, all departments have. You're right, there's a continuum, but uh, is there a form uh, that you would have to fill out for each use of force incident. I know we do the incident reports and that's that's the incident that would be going to the report. Um, I can't recall any like a specific piece of paper for use of force. Okay. Uh, do you understand the different types of uh, resistance? Do you know what active resistance versus passive resistance is? Is that a legal question? It's a, it's a use of force question. If it's a use of force question, it's never in anything I've ever seen. Okay. And so when you talked about the continuum, uh, there was a lower end, right? There's the, the presence. The presence. Correct. And then it escalates all the way up. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so when you say presence, you mean officer presence? Officer presence. Okay. And then at some point there's uh, open hand techniques? That's the third step. Okay. What's the second? Verbal. Verbal. And when can you transition from the verbal use of force to the open hand techniques use of force? Whenever the safety is concerning at that point. If the person is not listening to the verbal commands, that's when you use the open uh, hand technique, and that's where I was at. Okay, so uh, the suspect's level of resistance matters, right? Oh, yes. Okay, and are you aware if the City of Lake Jackson use of force policy describes the difference between active and passive resistance? I, I don't know. Okay. And are you also aware uh, that interference, well, let me back up. Did you, now, now I talked, you talked about interfering with the, uh, the crime scene or the accident scene, right? Yes. Sir. Is that different from uh, interfering with the public duties? Yes. Sir. Okay. So did you think that Mr. Reyes was interfering with public duties? Yes. Sir. Okay. Are you aware of whether or not uh, that Mr. Reyes was permitted uh, to interfere, or that's not a crime to interfere with public duties if it's 
by verbal alone? No, sir. Okay. Did you think that Mr. Reyes was doing more than just verbal resistance? Yes, sir. How so? When he was on the scene and refused to leave, that's whenever he starts to interfere. It's still a crime scene. Okay. Did you ever tell Mr. Reyes where exactly he could go? We were telling him, pointing him over towards my unit. Okay. You were pointing him towards your unit? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you specifically tell him your unit? No, sir. Okay. Um, but you, So you were just generally pointing to where your vehicle was? We told him to go over there. Okay. Sorry. Oh, no worries. Okay, but... Um, And you also asked Mr. Reyes to leave? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, did you ever tell him uh, where he could be without le having to leave? No, sir. Okay. One second. I have no further questions today. I pass. I do. I do. Exhibit one on this will be his personnel status report. And exhibit two will be the civilian interaction training program. You want to mark these first? Before or after? Doesn't matter. Both directly face which ones are going to be. The civilian in action is number two. <coughs> Officer Cagle, my name is Joseph Cagle. I work with the city of Lake Jackson in this particular matter. I have handed you two documents. One, it's got an exhibit one on it. It's your Texas Commission on Law Enforcement personnel status report. Do you see that, sir? Yes, sir. And what I've done is put a post-it on, on, on the page I want you to get to. And I have used a pencil to make a check by a course that's got 30418 by it. Do you see that, sir? Yes, sir. Last page. Let's see which page is your post -it? Page 6. It's very last right page. Thank you. And that 30418 is the civilian interaction training course that was done on January 6, 2022. Is that correct, sir? Yes, sir. Do you recall attending that course at some OSS Academy? That was online. An online course? Yes, sir. So what you do is you sit down and you have a computer screen and you look at it, right? Yes, sir. And if you go to the post-it on exhibit two, it'll be page 10. 3.3 visual or audio recording of traffic stops. You see that, sir? Yes, sir. And I'll just go through in the second paragraph, which starts in Texas, comma, you see that, sir? Yes. Sir. In Texas, comma, citizens have the right to make video or audio recordings of almost any transaction to which they are an active participant or witness. This includes interactions with law enforcement, comma, such as traffic stops, period. Witnesses may legally record video of peace officers as they interact with the public in much the same way that officers record the same transactions, period. Citizens may not, comma, However, comma, do so in a manner that physically impedes an officer or other public servant's ability to perform his or her duties, period. For example, comma, 
They cannot physically place themselves between an officer and someone the officer is attempting to search or arrest, period. It is reasonable for officers to ask them to stand a safe distance from the officer or others or to remove them from an active crime scene in order to protect the integrity of the crime scene, period. I read all that correctly, sir? Yes. All right, now, this online course that you took, was that directed by the city of Lake Jackson for you to take that course? No, sir. That's something you did voluntarily? Yes, sir. And when you sat, and you had already started with the city of Lake Jackson, Yes, sir. Okay. So, when you are acquiring, I think you said you left Missouri County to come to a smaller agency to increase your law enforcement knowledge baseline. Yes, sir, my career. All right. So, you're doing things to enhance your career. Yes, sir. And in enhancing your career, acquiring this type of information about civilian interaction training yes, is an enhancement, right? Yes. Now, you were asked a question. <coughs> if you were aware that Reyes was entitled to video, would that have somehow changed your interaction with him? Remember that question, sir? Yes. Now, obviously, when you took that online course, did you pay attention? Yes, sir. Did you take any notes when you were taking that course, sir? No, sir. Do you recall when they talked about the right in Texas for people to videotape? Yes, sir. And since you knew that he had a right to videotape, was him having his cell phone out in any way, shape, or form the reason you acted towards him the way you did? No, sir. The, as I understand your testimony, the reason you acted with Mr. Reyes the way you did was because of his location vis-a-vis -vis potential traffic coming off of 288 slash 332 that might uh, create a hazard to him if somebody hits I think you said there was a, a fire department truck that was parked Yes. Sir. they hit that, there's a chain of events and, and he ends up getting caught up in the wash, fair yes, statement? Sir. Yes sir. And so your concerns were safety Yes sir. Not whether or not videotaping was allowed, right? That's correct Because you knew based on that online course that videotaping in Texas was allowed by citizens, right? Yes, sir. And that was information you had while you were employed by the city of Lake Jackson, true? Yes, sir. I mean, you didn't need the city of Lake, for example, <clears throat> when you got to the city of Lake Jackson, you had a peace officer's license issued by the state of Texas, true? Yes, sir. And you brought that knowledge base with you to the city of Lake Jackson, true? Yes. You merely want to increase your knowledge base once you got here. Can I explain on that? Certainly, sir. I came over here more for the mental health. That's where my expertise was. I came to Lake Jackson to get back into policing. That's the reason I came here. Okay. Well, since you want to get back into policing, you understood that in getting back into policing from the mental health arena, you might need to do some, get some other information about new trends, such as videotaping, right? Yes, sir. Did you know when you were with Brazoria County that the public was entitled to videotape police activities? No, sir. So, you got that information on or about January 6th 2022, right, sir? Yes, sir. When you took that online course? Yes, sir. That's the first time you, as best you recall, had some information about videotaping in the state of Texas and that being allowed, right? Yes, sir. All right, now, so we take away, you're not saying that you did not have information about the ability of a citizen in the state of Texas 
to video police activities, right? Sure. Okay. You are not saying that you did not have knowledge that in the state of Texas, citizens can videotape police activities. Yes, sir. You knew that, true? Yes, sir. You knew that after you completed that online course, right, sir? Yes, sir. You knew that if this event happened on or about March 4th, 2022, then as of January 6th, 2022, you knew that in the state of Texas, videotaping was allowed of police activity, right, sir? Yes, sir. No one had to train you about that because you had that knowledge, true? Right? Yes, sir. I mean, for example, did you know how to use a firearm when you came to the city of Jackson? Yes, sir. Did you need to be trained about how to use a firearm? No, sir. Did you know how to drive a patrol car when you got to the city of Jackson? Yes, sir. Did you need to be trained about how to drive a patrol car? No, sir. Okay. Now, did you know how to put handcuffs on somebody who got to the seat like Jackson? Yes, sir. Did you need any training on that? No, sir. On how to put handcuffs on? No, sir. Okay. When did you first get training on how to put handcuffs on? In the academy. All right. So at the Houston Community College? Yes, sir. And you've been doing that for, I guess, since you got in law enforcement? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Now, if you go back to that exhibit number one, sir, on the first page, they've got kind of a service history on you, right, sir? Yes, sir. And it starts when you were the reserve officer at the Brookside Village Police Department from January 10th of 2000 to May 16th of 2000, right, sir? Yes, sir. And then the next, you were Brookside Village Police Department as a peace officer, right? I was still reserved. That's a clarificational error on Brookside. I guess I'm just reading what's on yes, your officer. Yes, sir. I've tried to get it fixed because it, it, it does, it's different on uh, time served. So what it should say is you were a reserve officer? Yes, sir. Did you have a peace officer license? Yes, sir. Now, even though you are, quote, a reserve peace officer, do you have all the same powers that the state of Texas gives to licensed peace officers? Yes, sir, because reserve is a licensed peace officer. Meaning you can arrest people that you see violating penal code provisions. Yes, sir. If they're violating transportation code provisions, speeding, running through stop signs, you can stop them and issue traffic tickets. Yes, sir. Because you are a licensed peace officer. Yes, sir. Okay, now, so that does your tenure with Brookside end in March 10th of 2005? Yes, sir. So you're there for from... There appear to be two times. Were you in the construction business between May of 2000 to November 26th of 2004 or so? Yes, sir. And so that little gap there is when you were in the construction business. That's when I went into it was in 2000. I'm just going to write construction on my copy of this. And so you get back into it in November of 2004. Yes, sir. And you stay with these folks for three months until March 10th of 2005. Yes, sir. Then you go to Missouri County as November of 2012, right, sir? Yes, sir, November 15th. And you are, well, a actually, t tell me how this works. You start in November of 2012. I see in here that you are a jailer license in April of 2013 to September of 2013. How was that working, sir? Did they hire you in November 2012 and then ship you to the jail? Yes, sir. In uh, November of 2012, I went in and that's when I had to do some courses through them, ride with different officers. Whenever everything got set up and done, there was no openings in patrol. So that's when they put me in the jail. The reason that the jailer's there is because when you go in the jail, you have to have what's called a jailer's license through TCOL. They give you a temporary jailer's license for one year. After that one year, you have to go through jail school or you lose a license. So whenever I left in, what was it? Uh, September the tw uh, 23rd of 2013 is when I went to full-time patrol. So, and, and that reflects that. It shows you six months in the Brazos, Missouri County 
uh, I guess jail, with yes. a temporary jail license, and then the rest of your time after that would be on patrol, and that ended August 13th of 2021, right, sir? I wasn't in patrol the whole time. No, I sir. Said, that, that's, I, I, I'm, yes, sir. I'm just talking about your tenure with the department. I'll yes, sir. Because you were with mental health for roughly six years. Yes, sir. You were in patrol two years. Yes, sir, about two, three years. I think that's what's what the evidence is. But the next entry is you at Lake Jackson in August of 2021, right, sir? Yes, sir. And then you go, and uh, so you're there, you go through the field training operation with a field training officer for X number of time, right, sir, with Lake yes, Jackson? Sir. Yes, sir. And at some point in time, you get let go and you are, are there two man patrols or one man Just patrol? Just one man patrol. Okay. You're now one man patrol, January of 2022, you take the online course, right? Yes, sir. About civilian interaction? Yes, sir. Okay, now, am I correct then when you tell me that it's online, again, go, going back to this page with the little posted on it? Yes, sir. Oop, wrong one. If I see OSS Academy, that's all online? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, were all these online courses things that you did voluntarily, or did somebody from the city of Jackson suggest you take? The at that time, that's when the city of Lake Jackson actually got a contract with OSS Academy, to where it was free for certain courses for the officers. So instead of paying out of pocket, it was I don't know exactly, and I don't remember how they clarified it but it was the way we can go in we can take the training that we needed or that we wanted basically when were you informed that the city of lake jackson had an agreement with the oss academy such that its police officers could go online to get training This only goes back to January 14th, oh, sorry, December 26th. Yes, sir, I didn't, did not print it all, but here's what I'm gonna do. Because anytime after I was hired with the city of Lake Jackson, when I started on the OSS Academy, yes, sir. that's when they had already started the program. I don't know if it was October, November, or December. Okay. And what I'm doing now is accessing your records. I just didn't print everything out. Now, on page seven, what I'm looking at, sir, shows some. The, there is a 923-2021 OSS Academy course called. 87th session state and federal law update. That I paid for. That you paid for? Yes, sir. And the next OSS I see is 1127 2021 OSS field sobriety testing. That was already when Lake Jackson started because I remember taking that course. Because I believe, I can't remember if I took the SFSTs before. Or after that course? Well, let me tell you what your record shows. There's an F period, S period, F period, S period, T period practitioner course on November 18th of 2021 at the Freeport Police Department. Yes, sir. So that's the chronology that I'm looking at here. Yes, sir. Okay, so are you telling me that by November 27th, 2021, at that point in time, you knew that the city of Lake Jackson had an agreement with the OSS Academy for its officers to go and receive online training at no cost to the officer. On certain courses, yes, sir. On certain courses. Yes, sir. And apparently the civilian interaction training was one of those certain courses. Yes, sir. And so you went and you took that course 
about food building interaction, right? Yes. Okay. Now, you're probably a little too young to remember who Paul Harvey was. I have no idea. I know you don't. He used to have a radio show in which he would, your lawyer smiling because he's old like me, in which he would say something, he'd get part of a story, and he would think one thing, and he would get, and he would say, and now for the rest of the story, and it would be a totally different item. And that's why I say that. So you've got to quote the rest of the story from me about what I didn't print out, which is on your record. Yes, sir. Senator, sir. And the important thing to me is that you knew that the city of Lake Jackson, in order to enhance their officers' basic knowledge, what I call baseline, as an officer, they had a contract with OSS Academy where its officers could take courses like you did on civilian interaction training, right? Objection, Phil. Can you answer the question? Yes, sir. All right, and you did you took that course? Yes, sir. All right, now let me ask you this, sir. You were asked a question about a a news release and the content of the news release by the city of Lake Jackson after this event. Remember yes. that question, sir? Yes, sir. Now, I wrote down that a part of the question dealt with some unreasonable use of force. Was that part of the question? Do you remember? I don't remember, sir. Okay. Here's my question. This particular news release, sir, it says it's got a March, it says for immediate release, March 9th, 2022 at 3 p.m. And it says March 4th, 2022 incident, internal affairs findings. Now you never read this news release, true? No, sir, I had to get off of all social media. I understand. Well, here's what it says. The Lake Jackson Police Department and City of Lake Jackson would like to express our gratitude for the patience afforded to us by the citizens of Lake Jackson while we thoroughly investigated an unfortunate incident regarding the actions of two of our officers on March 4th, 2022. Their actions were based on an erroneous understanding of law, period, which resulted in an arrest of a citizen who was legally videotaping a nearby traffic accident. Period. Police department supervision quickly discovered the error, comma, released the citizen, comma, and initiated our internal affairs process, period. At this time, comma, the internal affairs investigation is complete, comma, and we have taken appropriate action given the circumstances of the incident, period. As of this morning, comma, before conclusion of the investigation, comma, we accepted the resignation of Officer Johnny Cable from his position with the Lake Jackson Police Department, period. Officer Mendoza, comma, who was also a subject of the investigation, comma, will receive a period of unpaid leave and is required to participate in remedial training in the areas of law of concern in this incident, period. We're also in consultation with the District Attorney's Office a confirmation of whether the actions of the officers rise to the level of criminal responsibility. Period. We work hard every day to earn and keep the trust of the people we serve here in Lake Jackson. And as we move forward as a community comment, the Lake Jackson Police Department recommits itself to the tenets of delivering professional and courteous service comment preserving the peace counter and enforcing the law and constitution to make a safe environment for all citizens, period. That's the, 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 the news for me, sir. Okay. Joe, before you ask any questions, can you tell me what's the base number on that document, just so that we have that in the record? I probably need to get to that part of it. I didn't. <laughs> so no, I'm, I'm getting something different over there. I, I will try to find that. I'm not questioning that you read it correctly. I just want to make sure we have a record reference for it. I get it. Set, set this on in the record. I, I will try to get, get that uh, ready for we conclude. Because that's the big question I'll do for you. That okay. Point is I'll get reference. Okay. Now, let, let me ask you this, sir. 
did you have some contact with the district attorney's office? Or? No, not until after the Texas Rangers contacted me. Okay, then that, that indicates to me you did have some contact with the district attorney's office. Then, right? Through the Texas Rangers, okay. okay. I, I don't know, I'm just asking. Yes. Because sir. what it says here, we are also in consultation with the district attorney's office for confirmation on whether the action of the officers rise to the level of criminal responsibility, period. Has anybody told you that your conduct rose to the level of criminal responsibility? I'm not sure what you're asking. I know during the interview with the Rangers, they advised me of possible charges, but when I went through the grand jury, it was no build. Bottom line is, when I ask about the level of criminal responsibility, in my mind, what I'm asking you is, did anybody charge you criminally? No, sir. Okay. It was investigated and taken to citizens here in Brazoria County that comprise a grand jury, and they concluded that there was not enough evidence from their perspective to uh, initiate what they would call a true bill and get you charged with anything. Yes, sir. There was a question that was posed to you, and it was if you were aware that Plaintiff was entitled, that they, I said Reyes, I put Plaintiff in there, that Reyes was entitled to video, would that have changed your interaction with her? I think your response was, I cannot speculate, but I had no training on the videotape. Did I get that answer right, sir? Yes, sir. That's why I want you to look at that OSS map. Do you see now that you did receive some training on videotape? Yes, sir. Did, did you ever, now here, here's what happens with people. They forget things. And, and part of what I, I try to do, I, I use little examples and communicate, okay? Do you remember when the United States Senate was investigating baseball players for steroid use? I don't know when it was. I remember hearing something about it, but I don't, I couldn't tell you anything about it. You just know what happened? Yes, sir. Okay, one of the people that, that was questioned by the Senate was Roger Clemens. You know who that is, right? Yes, sir. In one of the responses to a question where Roger Clemens kind of changed information, Roger said, I misremembered. I love that phrase, I misremembered. My question to you now is, did you misremember that you received this training when you responded to the question that you didn't get any training on I plum forgot it that I even had that training. I understand. But you did, true? Yes, sir. All right. Now, you indicated that until the scene is cleared, that <laughs> both officers are in charge to ensure safety, right? Yes, sir. And I think you told us that you were sent to the scene originally to help Officer Mendoza with essentially traffic control type issues. Yes, sir. And you indicated that you moved your vehicle from one spot to another spot to try to control traffic. Yes, sir. I think on the exit from the mall to 332. Yes, sir. And you indicated that there was at least one time where a motorist who was concerned about, I guess, Ms. Vaughn, who apparently was a sister of her, almost made contact with another vehicle at the scene. Is that correct, sir? Yes, sir. Is that the sort of thing that was your concern about safety with respect to where Mr. Reyes was located doing whatever he was doing at the scene? Yes, sir. Did you ever hear Officer Mendoza ask Mr. K, Mr. Mr. Reyes to move 
near your unit which was close to the Starbucks for his safety? I don't remember if he said unit or not. I just I do know that Officer Mendoza did tell him to just move, go over there. But I, I don't remember the full extent of the con every single word. Okay. So but you do recall Officer Mendoza requesting Mr. Reyes to move to a location nearer to your unit. Yes, sir. You didn't use the words to him, safety. Don't know whether or not safety was uttered by Officer Mendoza to him to communicate, this is for your safety. Move from this location to another spot. Yes, sir. Now, when you were on Mr. Reyes's buttocks, were your knees on the ground, sir? My knees were on the curb. So your knees were on the curb? Yes, sir. So one knee, were both knees on the curb? Yes, sir. Okay, and so your legs are straddling him while your knees are on the curb? Yes, sir. So I assume your body weight is being held up by your knees. Yes, sir. Now, when you were in the Houston Community College Police Academy, did they have a use of force uh, training for you? Yes, sir. Those terms, active and passive resistance, were those things that you recall hearing when you were in that course? No, sir, I don't recall. When you got to Brazoria County, was active and passive resistance anything you heard about? When I was on patrol, I don't remember any of that. And the seven months you were with the City Lake Jackson never heard of active or passive resistance? I can't remember that either, sir. Now the were there any When Mr. Reyes, if your recollection, Mr. Reyes moved his right arm up, I think you said a couple of times underneath your left arm when you were trying to guide him away from the where that, that 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 unsafe location from your perspective. Yes. Sir. You touch him and does he immediately Knock your hand off, or knock your arm off, or what's it? I I could I can't speculate on the time. I, I don't know. It, it it was a few seconds. I just don't know. I can't tell you one second. I can't tell you fifteen seconds. I understand. I, well, some of us have looked at the video, so we know what what at least our perspective of time on video. But is that when when any would you consider? the use of his right arm against your left arm to be passive resistance or active resistance? That'd be more active resistance. Did he ever give you any advance warning that he was going to use his right arm to dislodge your hand from his body? No, sir. Once he did that, then was the decision made to uh, take him to the ground? Yes, sir. While you were at the scene, were, were, were your motor vehicle accident, was that part of your official duties at the scene of this motor vehicle collision? No, sir. Not the accident. Well, traffic control. Traffic control. I'm I'm talking about the two vehicles that collided. Yes, sir. That was that was Officer Mendoza that was doing the report. I was there for the traffic, the safety of the people. Correct. Your duties involved traffic control. Oh yes, sir. 
and your traffic control duties and safety of the people. Is it your position that Mr. Reyes, where he was located, was interfering with those duties? Yes, sir. Do you know whether or not there are any provisions of the penal code that deal with interference with public duties? Yes, sir. Do you know whether or not, as a peace officer, you are entitled to detain someone for violating a penal code provision dealing with interfering with public duties? Yes, sir. Now, do you know whether or not where Mr. Reckes was located, if his use of words to you and to Officer Mendoza was creating a potential disturbance. Check some form. It, to me it was. Was your traffic control activities an official proceeding, sir, from your perspective? I'm sorry. Official proceeding, meaning consistent with you being a police officer, doing your traffic control duties at this scene, sir. Yes, sir. Do you know whether or not Mr. Reyes's conduct, the use of words, the, the verbal things, the potential disturbance would hinder your ability to do your traffic control duties at the city center. Yes, I'm checking for Do you know whether or not there are any penal code provisions dealing with hindering proceedings by disorderly conduct? Yes, sir. As a peace officer, you're entitled to arrest people for, for class A misdemeanor, sir? Yes, sir. Since, since you're looking at something, the uh, uh, witness uh, needs to uh, uh, take a uh, very short uh, break. We're off the record. It's 12 20 p.m. Uh, I need to do it. It's going to email you that news release oh, as, okay. and, and put an exhibit three on that one. Yes, sir. Okay. It should populate, so I mean, yeah, it should, it should. So, Brandon, yeah, you could just send it to no, uh, no, 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 Brandon at G2 Law. Yep, G2 Law, that's it. Everybody's gonna get this at the same time. Just for recording purposes, I started back at uh, 1227.
Kayla, that concludes my question. We'll go back to the record. What we've done is we've attached as exhibit number three the news release that I read to you, sir. Yes. And that's been sent to the court reporter and to respective counsel. With that, sir, that concludes my question at the present time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Officer Cagle. We need to talk about uh, Exhibit 2 real quick, if you could uh, take a look at that. Um, I just want to clarify some things here. This document states uh, Civil Interaction Training Program. It has the course number. Uh, do you see anything in this 11-page document uh, indicating that it's from the OSS Academy? No, sir. I haven't read the whole thing. Okay. So I, I don't. When you take courses from the OSS Academy, uh, it's online, right? Yes. Sir. And it's uh, generally videos? Uh, sometimes videos, sometimes just literature. Okay, and it's also a slideshow? Yes, sir. <clears throat> okay, and uh, this specific uh, course as well, it says it was two hours long, um, according to your TCOL records. Um, is it fair to say that if if, uh, if the training was provided by the OSS Academy, uh, it would clearly state on Exhibit 2 that this was part of the OSS Academy? I, I can't speculate on that. I, I don't know. I've never printed anything out like this online. Okay, while uh, you were talking about the OSS uh, Academy course, I actually uh, I actually went on to purchase, uh, purchase the course. Um, I may have to try to see if I can save it or not, but uh, and I may have to do it by uh, at least a screenshot, and so I can. Actually, it was a video, I guess. No sound. Well, we're not going to question him about things that have not been produced in the litigation, and that uh, I'll have oh, a chance oh, to uh, review. Oh, okay, got it. Okay. Got it. Okay. Understood. Uh, so you uh, testified earlier, and I just want to make sure that you said that you had received no training, but then the moment you were shown Exhibit 2, you said, oh, yeah, I did get training. Which I is don't, it? I don't remember that being in this training. Okay. That's been almost a year now. Okay. But the incident at issue occurred in March 2022, right? Yes, sir. And your TCOL records says you received Civilian Interaction Training Program what month? It says January. January 2022. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, January, precisely uh, to be exact, I guess it said January 6th, 2022? Yes, sir. So that would have been within 90 days of the March 4, 2022 incident, right? Yes, sir. And so if you did, in fact, receive training on that, would you have remembered receiving that training within the 90-day period? I, I, I can't, I don't know, because, I mean, I, I, you can see I took so many courses since then. But this, when it says civilian interaction training program, sitting here today, do you actually know what that training entailed? At this point in time, no. Okay, so even when you were shown Exhibit 2, you don't actually know if the contents in Exhibit 2 uh, mirrored the training you received in January of 2022. No, sir, I can't say. Okay. Second thing I want to show you is, um, or, I'm going to share my screen here. It's uh, what's Bates labeled as uh, Reyes 1. This is your document one and your document production? Yes. Okay. Take, a, take a look at that. Oh. What did I just do? Where's split screen? Okay, do you see at the top of this document it says to Officer Cable? Yes, sir. And it says from uh, Paul, how do you say his last name? Kibido. Kibido? Yes, sir. That's spelled K I B O D E A U X. And his position, Chief of Police? Yes, sir. 
Okay, and the date on this is March 9, 2022. Yes. Now on the bottom of this document, you see where the chief signed it? Yes. And it also says received by, uh, and then there's a handwriting, resigned before termination. Yes. Did you ever receive the letter from the chief of police that I'm, that I'm showing you here at Reyes 1? To my knowledge, no. This is what he read a minute ago, correct? No, that's the, uh, this is, uh, he, he read a, ple a press release. Okay. And you're talking, the he is, you're talking about Mr. Uh, Callier. Terminal finish. You can scroll down a little bit. this okay so you had a chance to read the letter at Reyes one mm -hmm. yes yes sir I just read it okay and this is the first time you've seen this letter yes sir okay to my knowledge it is okay and so when you met with the, the chief uh, in March of 2022 where you were asked to resign uh, was this letter read to you no sir okay and so were you ever informed you know the of this first sentence here where it says, I am sustaining the policy violation of unsatisfactory performance by a sworn officer? No, sir. Okay, and then it says here, um, while trying to address a concern from one of the persons involved in the traffic accident about someone recording, the citizen you approached was advised and you took extreme action based on the erroneous belief that taking images of a license plate in public was against the law. Do you see that? I see it. And then the very next sentence says, the citizen, completely within the law and not suspect of any criminal activity, was not required to show identification. You see that? I see. Is it your understanding that, uh, in, in the reference of this letter, mentions IA 2022-03-001? You see that? Yes, sir. So is it your understanding that this is a letter from an internal affairs investigation? I have no idea. Okay, but uh, before the chief wrote this, that the citizen completely within the law and not suspected of any criminal activity, uh, is it your understanding that all of the body worn camera would have been reviewed? I don't. It. I. I would say it would. Okay. I mean, it's five days after. Okay, and uh, but but this uh, determination uh, mm -hmm. was made. Would you agree uh, without without talking to you about it? Say, say that again, I'm sorry. Is it your understanding that the chief reached this conclusion that the citizen was completely within the law and not suspected of any criminal activity without getting your side of the story? I can't, I don't know how to, I can't answer that. Well, I, you weren't interviewed by anyone no. from Internal Affairs. No, I was never interviewed by Internal Affairs. Uh, none of the conversation was brought up about this. Okay, and you were never asked to make any written statements. No, sir. And no one asked you for your version of the incident report? No, sir. Okay. And, uh, but it looks here that the chief of police for the city of Lake Jackson acknowledged that Mr. Reyes was completely within the law. Right? That's what it says. Okay. And then uh, it says here, with your training and vast experience, these two points of the law should have been quite evident to you. So do you agree with the chief's uh, representation that uh, Mr. Reyes uh, was completely within the law? I can't, I, I don't know how to, I, I don't know. 
Well, you were just uh, testifying after the city's council asked you about disturbances and interference and all of these things. Uh, that's not in this letter, is it? No, sir. Okay. And then it says, too, the following points is, I must also sustain the policy violation of use of force under the portion of the policy which states, quote, not more force in any situation that is reasonably necessary under the circumstances, close quote. You see that? I see it. Following sentence, if affecting a lawful arrest, the use of force, the force used in the incident was only that necessary to overcome resistance, but in this case, the force used was unnecessary in that the arrest was unnecessary. You see that? I see. Okay. Uh, so do you agree with the chief's position here that the force used was unnecessary and that the arrest was unnecessary? No, sir. Okay. Why don't you agree with Because that? I didn't arrest him. Okay. Uh, did you were you ever afforded the opportunity to tell uh, any uh, city of Lake Jackson employee about whether or not you arrested Mr. Reyes? No, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm gonna drop that. Okay. So uh, based at least on that letter uh, from the chief of police. Um, well, let me ask you this. Did you receive any correspondence or any communication, whether verbal or written, from anyone with the city of Lake Jackson to suggest that Mr. Reyes at any time was accused of any criminal conduct? No, sir. Thank you for your time. I pass. Back to exhibits one and two. Okay. Yes, sir. Exhibit one is the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement Personal Status Report, right, sir? Yes, sir. And it's pretty much, how would you characterize exhibit number one, sir? That's what I see on the computer. So it, it's your history it, as a law enforcement, for as me. a T. Cole licensed peace officer, right? Yes, sir. And any courses that you took that were T. Cole certified and or met T. Cole requirements. Yes, sir. And the number that on the exhibit number one for that course that you took, that's a T. Cole number. Do you see that, sir? Yes, sir. Then you look at that 30418 and you look at exhibit two. Civilian interaction training program. Whose course is that? It's technically T Cole's course. It's got that big little I guess mark on this. It's Texas Commission on Law Enforcement, right? Yes, sir. Got that same course number, right? Yes, sir. 30418. Yes, sir. Has it been your experience as a peace officer that when you take a specific T code course with a particular course number, that the content of the material is going to be the same? Yes, sir. So when we look at that 3.3 visual audio recording part if it's offered by the OSS Academy consistent with the key code provisions then the content would be the same yes sir I'll go another question for time to trial thank you sir Mr. Cagle are you uh, are you a T. Cole certified instructor yes sir okay and so you understand that uh, you have a lot of flexibility in giving a T. Cole course? We don't have flexibility in a T. Cole course. Well, you're not giving the material from T. Cole. No. You have to come up with the material yourself, right? No, sir. The course is actually written by somebody and submitted to T. Cole for approval. Okay, and so when we look at Exhibit 2, 
uh, this is not, the, it, when you flip open to page two, for example, it talks about abstract, right? The title. Yes, sir. And the very first sentence says, this guide is designed to assist the instructor in developing the appropriate lesson plan. Yes, sir. Okay, so exhibit two itself is not actually a lesson plan. No, sir. Okay, and so, again, prior to today, you have not seen an exhibit two. I can't recall it. Okay, and uh, have you ever uh, prepared any courses for the OSS Academy? No, sir. So, sitting here today, do you know if the OSS Academy uh, prepared courses, uh, any of their courses pursuant to the T. Cole abstracts? I, I can't, I, I don't know. Okay, so all the questions you're getting about uh, the OSS Academy and the quality of their courses, you're just speculating. I mean, it's the course that we take. I mean, I, I can't say that OSS wrote it. I can't say Kloss and Buck wrote it. I can't say you or I wrote it. I, I don't know. Okay, just uh, just to be fair, on March 4th, 2022, uh, prior to that point, did anyone from the city of Lake Jackson uh, tell you whether or not an individual had a right to film police activity? Not to my knowledge. Okay, and... Uh, and you told a number of officers on the scene about uh, Reyes engaged in the activity of filming or photographing the scene. Yes, sir. Okay, and, and, and that, those officers you told included supervisors? Yes, sir. Okay, and it included other officers, right? I remember Mendoza. Uh, I don't remember who all was there. There was other officers there. Okay, but you told your version of events a couple of times? Yes, sir. Okay, did any City of Lake Jackson police officer out on the scene ever question or tell you that uh, what Mr. Reyes was doing was lawful? No, sir. No, sir. Thank you, sir. I have a question about your ability to John Trail. You're done.